dipolarity, also called something, uh, also called having a net dipole or having a dipole moment, describes a molecule that has an uneven distribution of electrons, which has interesting properties we'll discuss more in lecture and elsewhere. The question we're posing is how do you know if something is polar or not? We take, there are three steps in order to determine it. First, you must draw the loose structure, then determine the shape and draw that, and then you can determine the polarity. You must do all three of these in order to determine if something is polar or not. If it looks asymmetric, it's polar. If it looks symmetric, it's nonpolar. Let's do some simple examples. Water, here. Is this symmetric or asymmetric? Some of you might say that along this line, hey, that looks symmetric. However, it's not symmetric along that line right here. And because that's asymmetric, then this molecule right here, I'll put a P for polar. Water is polar, okay, because it's asymmetric. There's hydrogens on the bottom, but not on top. Let's take a look at this compound right here. This is a trigonal planar compound. It has no lone pairs on the boron. And if you take a look at this, it's fully symmetric. There's hydrogens in all different places, but they're equally distributed okay, along the molecule. So this is NP, or nonpolar. Let's take a look at this one right here. This linear compound, 180 degree bond angle, this is totally symmetric as well, just like this one. Because it's completely symmetric, this one is also nonpolar. Okay? The chlorines are evenly distributed around the beryllium. Let's take a look at another example. CH4, right here. This is a tetrahedral shape, 109. 0.5 degree bond angles. This is completely symmetric. All these hydrogens are symmetrically distributed around the tetrahedron. And because it's fully symmetric, this is nonpolar. Let's try the next one. Let's look right here. This is a trigonal bipyramidal complex, five groups. Notice two things. We've got fluorines here in a linear shape, and this sulfur with two fluorines is completely symmetric, in the same way this one is. And then we've got a sulfur with two or three chlorines. This part of the molecule is completely symmetric around uh, a trigonal planar sort of shape, just like the boron was. Because of this, it's made up of two nonpolar parts. The whole molecule is completely symmetric and nonpolar. Let's go over here. Let's look at this one right here, this xenon compound. What's that? Well, it's an octahedral shape uh, because it's got six groups. It's got 90 degree bond angles. Let's take a look at it and its parts. Part of this is a xenon with two chlorines. That's completely linear, 180 degree bond angles. That part of it is symmetric, just like this is symmetric and linear. And then we've got the four fluorines here. This is kind of a square planar shape. This is totally symmetric as well um, because it's got four fluorines in the corners of a square. So since the individual pieces are symmetric, the whole molecule is symmetric, and this one is also nonpolar, NP. All right, let's move on up here, NH3. Notice what happens in this example I did not draw the Lewis diagram, nor did I draw the shape. Assuming that you can do that, I will just draw it out for you. N will have a lone pair on it, and thus a total of four groups with the three hydrogens. Its electronic shape is tetrahedral, but its molecular geometry is trigonal pyramidal. Notice this, you might think, hey, this looks pretty symmetric, kind of like the water did. But notice there's hydrogens on the bottom, but not symmetrically opposed on the top. In that case, this molecule right here is asymmetric. Now that I'm looking at its shape, and thus I'll put a big P for polar. That's polar. It's asymmetrically distributed with hydrogens on the bottom and a lone pair on the top. 
Let's take a look at the next one. You're looking at this like, this looks great. Some of you might think, hey, this uh, complex, this compound, it looks like it's nonpolar because I've got the hydrogens symmetrically distributed and the chlorine symmetrically distributed. But there's something you forgot. The shape's not drawn yet. Okay, I drew the Lewis structure for you, but I didn't draw the shape. This carbon has four groups, one, two, three, four, so that means it's tetrahedral. It looks a little bit at first symmetrically distributed because we've got two symmetrical chlorines and two symmetrical hydrogens. However, if you look at it more closely, chlorines are on one side and the hydrogens are on the other, and that causes an asymmetrical distribution with the chlorines being electronegative, pulling electron density towards itself. So this compound right here, because it's asymmetric, I'll put a P for polar. Finally, let's do the last one. This last one's only made up of carbons and hydrogens. Now you notice, I don't have the Lewis structure for this, and uh, I don't have the shape drawn out. What you could do, CH bond, is uh, we consider it pretty much nonpolar, or completely nonpolar. So if you see a compound that's made up of carbons and hydrogens only, then you know automatically it's nonpolar.